Is it clear? There is paper, pen, where are you sitting right now? So you can spread. You can go to the children's room. You can go to the kitchen if you want. So um, the leader shows you the questions. It's just about coordination. You understand? You know? So, yeah, I keep it here. So it's 20 minutes you have, and I'm coming around. So choose where you want to go. Paper and pen are there.
Okay, let's get back. All the groups, let's get back. So we start with the group of the blood, okay? Let's welcome them. Well done. I saw some awesome discussions in the group, which was nice. The function and duty of the blood, the natural function of the blood in the body. So we have transportation of oxygen and food, it fights viruses and diseases, it gives life and it, when, a wound, when there is a wound, it closes the wound. I should have given it to my wife. <laughs> She will do a better job. <laughs> Maybe I get corrected when I come over there. <laughs> then um, the blood in the Old Testament, Bible verse and significance for uh, protection and deliverance. We have here in Exodus 24:8. Moses sprinkles the blood of the covenant. So it brings the people of God into the covenant with God through the blood. In Deuteronomy 12.23, the life is in the blood. And the same we find in Leviticus 17.11, uh, the life is in the blood. And in Exodus 12.13, when I see the blood, I will pass over. This is the blood, the Passover, where the blood has been applied to the doorposts and death passed by because they were protected under the blood. So the function of the blood in the Old Testament was the protection against death. Then we have the blood of Jesus. What does it do for us? In Ephesians 1, 7, it brings redemption. In 1 Corinthians 11, 25, the New Testament in the blood of Jesus. This is the covenant, the New Testament in the blood of our Lord Jesus. Then in Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. No other way is there but by the blood of Jesus, that there is the forgiveness and the remission of sin. A very important function that brings life. Then we see it is the cup of blessings, 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and in Hebrews 12, 24, it is the blood that is sprinkled, it speaks. So the blood of Jesus speaks. 1 John 2.2, 2, Jesus is the propitiation for sins by his blood. He brings the propitiation, he is the propitiation with his own blood for sins. And then in Matthew 26.28, the blood of the covenant. In, he, in Revelation 7.14, the blood of Jesus washes white. In Revelation 12.11, through the blood of Jesus, we are overcomers. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And Romans 5, 9, the blood justifies. By the blood, we are justified. We are made righteous before God. And in Ephesians 2, 13, through the blood, we are made near or brought near. The blood brings us close to God. These are the points we have. Uh, 
in what, what did we learn through the study of the blood? Without the blood, there is no life. And the life is in Jesus because he is the life himself. And by his blood, we have the forgiveness of sin, the ju justification. We are made righteous. We are made holy and perfect. We are redeemed. We have received eternal life. Everything through the blood. This is what we learned. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need our Bible a little bit for our own um, presentation. Hallelujah. And the first question, we didn't really understand it well until Lady Pastor came to like, explain to us what it's really all about. Hallelujah. So um, the question was, Biblical prophecies from the Old Testament fulfilled by Jesus. That is three Bible verse and signification. Hallelujah. So the Messiah will be tempted by Satan. So an example was taken in the book of Psalm, Psalm 91. 10 to 12, it says, No evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your dwelling. For he orders his angels to protect you wherever you go. Hallelujah. They will hold you with their hands to keep you from striking your feet on a stone. So we got also Psalm 22, 17 to 18. Hallelujah. Can someone please read Psalm 22, 17 to 18? If you're there, please, you can just read it. Hallelujah. Say, I may, I may tell all my bones, hallelujah, to look and stare upon me. Hallelujah. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my virtues. Hallelujah. So we have also Isaiah 53, verse 3. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He will hide as it were our faces from him. He will despise and will esteem him not. Hallelujah. So, I mean, we didn't really come around yeah, to that. So. so we'll go to the second question. Say, Jesus predicted his death. Hallelujah. There are so many verses in the Bible that tells us that Jesus already knew when he is going to leave earth, like leave his people, hallelujah, to go to his father, hallelujah. Like you can see also from Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23, hallelujah. So can someone read, please? And another person can turn to Mark 8, verse 31. Matthew 16, 21 to 23. So Matthew 16, 21 reads. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, 21 reads. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto, unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jer Jerusalem and suffer many things of, of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again and third day. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue to 20, 22, right? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou sufferest, severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Hallelujah. So there are many ways, like even in the Gethsemane, 
uh, um, garden, garden of Gethsemane, you see how Jesus was weeping and asking God that if it's your will, let it be done. But I mean, it was really heavy for him how he would depend the kind of pain that he knew that he's going to face. Hallelujah. And also when he called his disciples, they were like parting the bread together, taking the communion. He told them that I'll be with you for a very short time. So he already knew what was going on, hallelujah, and how he's going to leave his people. But he said, I'm going to send a comforter to you that will comfort you, hallelujah. So all those things made us to know that Jesus already knew when his hour would be at hand, hallelujah, when he's going to leave his people. So also there are many verses, like also in Luke 9, 43 to 45, you can read through it, you see, like, or you, you read how Jesus, I mean, reacted, like, informed his people beforehand that he's going to leave them, hallelujah, but he's not going to leave them alone because there's the Holy Spirit that is there and is also here for us today, hallelujah, and that's why we are still praising the name of Jesus wherever we are, hallelujah. So the third one is, it's a five sentence Jesus said on the cross, hallelujah. So we say one is, uh, Jesus said on the cross, why have you forsaken me? And also in Luke 23, 43, it says, surely I say unto you, you will be with me in paradise, hallelujah. So there are many like go also, he said also, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing, Hallelujah. And also in Luke 23, 20, uh, 23, from verse 28 to 31, he calls the children daughters of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. When you read all the verses, you are going to understand what he's saying. And also in Luke 23, 46, it says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Hallelujah. So those are the five sentences that he made on the cross. And... Um, we just read through because we don't have our like Bibles now for us to really, I mean, there's no time for us to really read through all the verses so that we understand clearly. Hallelujah. So, thank you. Amen. Amen. That's fine. That's fine. Because it's just a question about what Jesus, the words he said. You understand? That's okay. That's fine. So the resurrection team, well done. The, the resurrection team, then we... You wanted to, uh, to finalize... Then the resurrection team. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we are the resurrection team. And um, after Jesus was resurrected, the people that saw him was the two Marys and then his disciples and two other disciples, which name were not state, stated in the Bible. Um, another... benefits of the resurrection is justification glorifying our savior the price was paid deliverance from bondage sin and satan freedom to spiritual death relationship with god sickness and diseases are not our portion fulfillment of prophecy how to activate the resurrection power in oneself. Number one, you must be born again. The Holy Spirit needs to be in you. You have to put Jesus first. You have to deny oneself. You have to serve God and you have to be in his presence. Amen. learned about uh, the resurrection and um, Mary and um, 
Martha, their, um, their desire, their love for their Savior. They, these, were, these women were not looking just for any man, but they were looking for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah and the Savior of the world. They were looking for him because they found someone which whom their hearts could connect with. And they saw purity in Jesus. They saw divinity in him. And um, he was their Savior. He was their Rabboni, their teacher, their everything. And he was taken away from them at the death of the cross. And so they wanted to see him. So they went to his grave looking for him because they adored Jesus so much that they wanted to, um, they wanted to embalm his body. They wanted to um, put um, oil. They want fragrant oil on his body because they honored him. They honored Jesus in life and they wanted to, wanted to honor him in death. And so that's why they were there at the tomb. And um, Jesus Christ is resurrected and he lives for all eternity. And when Jesus Christ was resurrected, he also rose us up from the dead as well. We were separated from God spiritually, but through Jesus Christ's resurrection, he has, now has a spiritual body. So now we are called the body of Christ. Anyone that believes in Jesus Christ is saved, and automatically you are now a child of God. So because Jesus Christ is resurrected, we now have a New Testament church, which is his body. And um, we are the fullness of Christ in him. And through this resurrection, we can live, we can have hope. We can also impart to others what Jesus Christ has done for us, what Jesus Christ is doing in us, and what Jesus Christ is going to do for us in the future. Amen. And um, the scripture says, um, how do you activate, how do, to, how do you act, activate the resurrection power of, of Christ in us? So what the scripture says, Philippians 3.10, it says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. So to know Christ is that you have to put him first. The Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things shall be added unto you. These were Jesus' words. He said, when you seek me first, when you put my kingdom, make my kingdom your priority, everything else will be added unto you. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. He said, if you believe, he said to Mary, if you believe, he said to Mary, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. When you believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ you see his glory you experience his glory you feel his glory when you are uh, when you believe in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ um, was the greatest miracle that Jesus did in the Bible was when he called Lazarus back from the dead Lazarus was dead and he was in the tomb for four days and so that miracle he had to call Lazarus spirit back into his body then he had to heal his body and the Lazarus came came for it to the glory of God. So um, Paul is saying that we have to put away everything and put Jesus first. We have to count the things in life that we think that are important. The thing that we think that we cannot live without, we cannot do without. These, those things must pale in the comparison in knowing Christ Jesus. And when you know Christ Jesus, you have everything because Jesus Christ is the price. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap for yourself. Amen. That was awesome. That was awesome. Actually, I planned to, to have a prize for the best group, but honestly, all the three groups did so well. <laughs> I cannot choose. So there's some chocolate here. Come and serve yourself. <laughs> I will give it round. Come and have and enjoy yourself. Amen. <laughs> Just give it round, you know. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sorry, people who are watching us online, you can you can serve yourself chocolate yourself at home. Amen. But I believe we have been having great time. We are moving to the the, the, the third part of this uh, Easter workshop. Uh, at any point in time, uh, we have drinks at the back. Please, you can just go. Uh, you can pick a drink. But please, I don't want anyone just taking the drink away. It's to be consumed here, okay? Uh, we have some um, 
plantain chips, you know, all those things here. Yeah. So at any point in time, you can stand up and uh, refresh yourself. Uh, this uh, time now, I will be moderating. Amen. I have my microphone. Everybody coming will be timed. Hallelujah. This is the rule. We are moving to the deacons and the pastors now. Everybody has got 10 minutes. Amen. They, anyone that comes, they will tell us it's about Easter. Okay? They will tell us about a scripture that bless them about Easter and explain to us on that scripture. Every, the lesson will take just five minutes. After five minutes, we ask any one of us if there is any question regarding what has been preached, not a general question. The question goes to what has been preached. Uh, people online, you can also write your question out and uh, we can choose to use your question. The person who gave the, 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 the lesson will have two minutes with the time of asking the question and answering, two minutes for that. Then you will now lead us in prayer for three minutes, okay? So five minutes lesson, two minutes question and answer, three minutes of prayer. Hallelujah. So we will start with our deacon. Let us welcome deacon Marvin. So we are giving you the microphone five minutes to two, five minutes after two, I'm collecting this microphone. <laughs> okay, you have the microphone. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a wonderful time to be together, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm privileged and honored to talk about Easter within five minutes. So I will just run and go through what I, what I have. Hallelujah. You know, Easter is a holiday time that gifts are being shared among the children of God. Not only the children of God, but globally. And it's not, it's not only about sharing of gifts, such as chocolate rabbits, or chocolate eggs, or colorful Easter basket and all. But it's Easter is more than that. Hallelujah. So, as Christians, as believers all over the world, there are thousands of hundreds, of hundreds of millions of Christians around the world today celebrating the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus died and went to the cross for us. He paid our, the price. He took the sins away. Hallelujah. He died for our sins to be forgiven. So, Jesus is no longer in the grave. He has risen. Hallelujah. And he's sitting on the right hand of our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. So Christianity is based on crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is why we should be reminded as Christians that the resurrection is a significant thing for us to celebrate in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, and if the Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Hallelujah. And our faith is also in vain. And if the first Corinthians 15, 14, if you can display it, first Corinthians 15, 14, where Paul said, he said, and if Christ has not been risen, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain. Hallelujah. And he went further to verse 17. I said, And if Christ has not been risen, your faith is fertile and you are 
and your sins has been there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Easter should be reminded, should be celebrated by Christians. And this is the reason why we are all gathered here to celebrate the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to the living hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 3. Hallelujah. Amen. So through resurrection, we believe that life has been triumphed over death, good over evil, and hope over despair. Hallelujah. So we are no longer in any sins. Hallelujah. So we should also be encouraged as Christians that the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a sign of great power. Nothing is too big for God to do. No matter what you are going through, but remember that the resurrection of Jesus Christ signifies the triumphant over every difficulty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Easter, as we have said, in this season of crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, so no matter what we Christians, no matter what you are going through, it is God, remember Jesus Christ has done everything for you. So it's not only this season, let be, be here have it in mind that every time should be, a, should be a, an Easter for all Christians. It's not only in this month of April that we should remind ourselves of Easter. Remind yourself every day. Remind yourself of Jesus went to the cross for you. Remind yourself that he died for your sins. Remind yourself that he has taken all your pains away. He has paid the debt. Remind yourself of everything that God has done for you. Because when you believe in him, your life will never, never remain the same. Hallelujah. Amen. So personally, I believe that the resurrection proved that Jesus, the, the, the Christ, the Messiah, is the Son of God. Everything he said was true in the Bible. Hallelujah. So he said, it is finished. I have done it all. It is finished. Hallelujah. Amen. So I think I'm done with the five minutes. So we can take questions. Yes. Uh, he has preached a very powerful message. But this is a workshop. Uh, I'm saying this because of people coming after. I need only one scripture. And you explain the scripture so that we can benefit. You know, this is a message on Easter. Well, you know, but this, I don't want it to look like Sunday service. This is a workshop. You, you, you get it. Like 1 Corinthians 15, 14 to 17, you just explain on it, you know. Then the lesson on it, then we pray on it. But this is, you know, maybe I didn't make it clear very well. This is why. So that everybody, because Deacon has taught so many this thing now that I'm even confused which one will I choose now. So we, so, can, take, <laughs> we can take, I mean, the Paul said in First Corinthians 15, 14, Say, yeah, 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 yeah. So we can take that and just read. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. I, I agree with you. You know, I'm just saying for people coming afterwards. So for him, we stick with First Corinthians, 15 verses 14 to 17, because nobody else will come and say according to what they can say. No, 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 no. This is a workshop, so that. <laughs> It's not my word, it's the word of God. Yeah, yeah. So, no, we want to hear more the word of God, you know. So, as somebody is coming, if they have used your point, you cancel it. 
Then you give us something fresh, something new. Hallelujah. Bless you are with me. <laughs> okay. So do you have any question on 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and 17? Is there any question? You know, he said something that for me is the he said the resurrection signifies the triumphant over every difficulty. Because this said, if Christ, you know, it talks about Christ resurrecting. And it is that for me, it's a very powerful nugget. That means nothing can keep us down. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Ricky, just lead us three minutes prayer. No question. Put your hands together for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for this season. Yes. Celebrating you, Lord. Father, Lord, we are gathered here me. just because of you. Shake we are not gathered here for our God. sake, but we are gathered here for you, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, you said we are two or more are gathered in, your, in the midst. Father, Lord, we are here today to celebrate the, your crucifixion and the resurrection of you, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for giving us life. That you are no longer in the grave. Yes. You are alive, O oh Lord. Yes. This is why we are here to celebrate you. Amen. Thank you, Father, Lord, for who you are unto our lives. Yes. Father, Lord, you gave us a chance to be born again. Because Amen. when we are born, we are born into darkness. Mm. But now we are in the light. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank Father, Lord, you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for knowing you. Yes. We thank you, O oh Lord, for serving you. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us well and healthy. In yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you will take us from, from from step to step, O oh Lord. Yes. Father, Lord, you take with us. Thank you, Lord, for taking us from level to level, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for increasing us, O oh Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Your going to cross yes. signifies abundance in yes. our lives. Yes. It signifies freedom in our lives. Yes. It signifies restoration. Yes. It signifies salvation, O oh Lord. Yes. Father, Lord, we thank you. Yes. Father, Lord, we glorify your name, O oh Lord. Yes. We worship you, O oh Lord. Yes. We adore your holiness. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us, O oh Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. That is powerful. Amen. Let us welcome Pastor Biodo first. Amen. Jesus as our mirror 
let us use me, Jesus Christ, to measure that situation that at the end we are all going to laugh. At the end, joy is on our way. No matter that tribulation, Easter is a way to see Jesus as our author and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if anyone have any question according to the guidance of this day, <laughs> so if there's any question, let us address it together and yes, invite the yes. Holy Spirit. I have, I have one question. <laughs> it said that I was set before him endured the cross. My question is this. Why the cross? Why the cross? What does the cross signify? What does the cross signify? We can throw the question. Throw the, yeah. but, uh, I want to. My, yeah. I, I think the cross is a symbol of tribulation. You know, in pain, there is upliftment. And there are times when we don't face challenges. You can't really know who you are. So it's a, it's a, the, the, the cross is like, the, actually in the Bible, it is the culture. When you want to punish a criminal, you want to you execute him. That was the time, that was the type of execution available at that time. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it as a, a spiritually, you will see that when you have tribulation, tribulation can come in, in any way. It can come in any form, but it's a step, it's like a ladder to our upliftment. That is why I see it. Is a, that cross is like a ladder to Jesus Christ for God's name to be glorified. Hallelujah. So I don't know if I'm <laughs> back, but I survived. Yeah, close, 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 close. Is there any addition? But you understand my question. Why, why the cross? Yeah? Mm. Mm. To fulfill prophecy. Yeah, because there are so many ways for the pain, you see. So, but this, but the Bible said tree, not cross. <laughs> 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 